Hi, Kate Russo with Majestic Rider. So I'm gonna try to cover some problem issues that you might be having with your horse. This has to do with the young horse, but also the older horses. Right. Let's first talk about bolting. So bolting is when you're riding your horse and all of a sudden it just takes off. It gallops forward and you're unable to stop the horse right away. It's a very scary feeling when this happens because it feels like you're on a runaway train or if you've ever, you know, been in a car and for some reason, you know, the brakes weren't working. If you've never experienced it, it's hard to explain, but if you have experienced it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I have been on horses that have bolted before. So when you have a horse that bolts, the first thing you're trying to do is figure out why is it bolting? There are many causes, but you kind of have to be a detective with any issues that come up with your horse. And sometimes you have to actually write it down and you'll be able to actually figure it out quicker of what has happened. So if somebody tells me their horse is bolted or their horse is bolting, I always ask them, when was the first time that horse bolted? And then once they tell me, I ask them, did the horse ever bolt before that or did the horse have a history of bolting? So if your horse was perfectly fine and then something came up behind it, like a herd of cows, a bike screeching its brakes, um, we now have those people on our trails, you might not have them at yours, they but have they the one-wheeled skateboards, which are now electric, so it looks like people are floating across the ground, which is very crazy to horses. Um, so you might have one of those come up behind you, or you might have um, someone with a baby carriage, but it's something that usually comes up quickly behind the horse, and the horse can't make out what it is. And so what happens is the horse goes into a flight mode and runs forward to get away from the object. Now, if it's something like that that caused it, that's a much easier fix. At least you know what is causing the problem. And what I recommend to people is you need to get the horse's confidence back. Because what has happened now is if he hears any noise behind him, he's associating it with that thing and has now become very fearful. So he needs help building his confidence back up and also being able to have things come up behind him. My recommendation is to first fix it at home and I wouldn't go back on the trail until I had fixed it, otherwise you're just asking for it to happen again. And what I do is I take the horse in the round pen and I bring objects up behind the horse. Now, if you have someone to help you, this is easy because you can hold the horse and they can keep slowly coming up behind it. You'll see me do that with like joggers or bikes um, because the horses do have a blind spot behind them. And so when you come out at different angles, sometimes they can't make out what it is. So the, what I do is I slowly bring the object up to the horse, bring it by them, get rewarded um, if they stand still, or I come up and pet them after it so they know it's okay, and I do it over and over again. Once the horse can accept this, then I start doing it faster. And once they can accept that, I do it faster and faster. And then I try to pick blind spots. So the horse just gets used to this object coming up behind him and finding out that he doesn't get hurt. Once a horse figures out something is not gonna hurt them, a lot of times the fear goes away. So that's what I would do at home. And I would do it with many objects if your trails are busy like ours. So I, you know, we have joggers, we have baby carriages, we have bikes, we have those skateboards, we have scooters, we have all sorts of things. And I would get as many of those things as you can and bring them up behind the horse over and over again. Now, again, that's what the joggers are gonna do. And once you can do the circle, then you can go back and forth on it. Okay. Well, it's up to my 
horse if you just continue it if they have a problem with a jogger anytime otherwise they've already seen it now you might say, well, do I need to do it in front of the horse? Well, once you ride by it, you're gonna turn around and come back anyhow, but it's most important from the back because your horse is bolting. If it was afraid of something in the front, it would turn around and spin. So you're trying to bring these objects up behind the horse and get his confidence back. Now, the next thing I would do is walk the horse on the trail. When he's comfortable with all those things, I'm gonna take him out on the trail and I'm gonna show him I'm on the ground first. So if something bad happens, you can run away and the, you know whatever the scary thing is will eat me and you'll be fine. So he'll be much more confident. And because I helped him at home. So I hand walk him and then if anything is coming up behind him, I will stop and take the horse off the trail and let him look at it coming up. And you might say, well, why don't you just stand him there and let him come up behind him? Well, not in the beginning. In the beginning, I'm going to help him. And what you're also looking for is cues. Because when before that horse bolted, if something was coming up behind it and that's what caused it, the horse's head usually comes up and the ears go back. But you might have missed that cue. So you're trying to pick up those cues so when you do get back on his back, you'll be able to pick it up and help him. So first I'm gonna take that horse off the trail every time his head comes up and his ears go back, I know something's coming. I'm gonna take it off and we're gonna wait for it to go by. Then I'll talk to the person or whatever the object is and then once it goes by, we're gonna follow it for a while. Because anything that the horse follows will bring out his curiosity and that will also make him braver because he'll think it's moving away from him, which it actually is, but the horse thinks, oh, it, you know, it's scared of me and it's moving away. So they get braver and braver, don't they? braver don't they so that's what I would do and once he's comfortable seeing those things and us just standing on the side then I would um, instead of taking him off the trail and having him look at it as it comes up I would still take him off the trail but I would keep his butt towards the object and then let them pass now you do that over and over again. Again, on the ground, you'll be able to stay calmer. You're not so worried. The horse isn't dancing around in place and you can be able to control it from the ground. But of course, it must have good ground manners first and respect you before you try these things. All right, so next, once, once you can tolerate those things um, coming up behind it, and with you standing on the ground, he does that over and over again with many different objects, then you can ride the horse. Now, if you're riding alone, um, you know, things are gonna come up behind it. There's no horse back there to block it. So you have to be ready for those things. And what I would do is watch for signals. As I'm riding the horse, I would give them jobs to do so they don't forget you're up there. And they, you know, if you keep giving them um, little tasks to do, they'll be more focused on you versus objects coming up behind them. But once they do hear something, and remember horses can hear things from miles away, when his head comes up and his ears go back or he gives a snort or you just think something has changed, I would pull off the trail and wait for it. If you get nervous, you can jump off. But otherwise I would pull off the trail, wait for it, and I would be sideways so the horse could see the object coming up. I would do that over and over again. And again, if once he's comfortable with that, then I would get off the trail, but then I would keep the horse standing backwards to it so the object comes up behind him. But you're doing it somewhere safe that the horse isn't going to kick out at the object, somewhere safe that you're not going to go flying off the trail. You're always looking for where you are safest first and how to keep you and your horse safe. Once he can do that, then you could start being a little bit more on the trail or start, instead of pulling off the trail, you hear it coming up, stay on the trail, give that horse little jobs to do. And then once that object comes up behind you, either you see it or they yell out to you, then you pull over and let them pass by. So again, you're trying to build the horse's confidence back up because he lost his confidence in himself and he lost his confidence in you. Now this can happen in younger horses because they haven't seen as much, but it can also happen in older horses if they haven't seen it, seen something before. So you have to break it down and work your way back up. If you don't, it just becomes a bigger problem and the horse starts bolting more and more. Now, if you're riding in uh, groups of horses, what I would make sure is that horse is in the middle. 
you give them someone who's brave up in front of them, and then you put someone who is brave, not spooky, <laughs> put a brave horse behind him. And then he'll be able to have objects passing by, but he's gonna trust those two horses and trust you, and then he'll get his confidence back that way. Then over time, you can move him in the back for small periods of time. If you feel him getting uncomfortable or nervous, you can put him back in the middle and you repeat that over and over again until he's in the back and he's just fine, okay? But remember, who you ride with is very important and you need to ride with calm riders and you need to ride with calm, non-spooky horses for that to work, okay? But it does work, but you have to take the time to figure out what he was bolting from and then to work on those objects. If you um, your horse bolted and say he bolted from a bike screeching down behind him and you you know you get him used to bikes again and all this stuff, but you never get him used to that screeching. When that bike comes screeching behind you, it's gonna happen again. So you need to get a bike that screeches or you need to get a recording of screeching and you need to imitate exactly what happened to help him to get his fear over it. And if you care for your horse and you wanna be safe and have a good horse, then you will take the time to actually fix the problem and not wait for it to happen again, okay? So that's bolting from an object that you know the horse had a problem with. So again, you can do that if you, the horse bolted the first time with you, um, or if somebody told you the horse was afraid of something, again, so something probably happened to spook that horse. And people don't think like certain things bother the horses, but I always tell people like, if something comes up behind you and scare them pretty bad, it's now a problem. If something's like a biker's coming up the hill riding at you and falls over, you might have a problem, especially with young horses. It can scare them. And if they think you're out to lunch up there and they have um, no trust in you, it becomes a difficult situation because they're looking to you for help. And if you're not there, then they don't want to be there and they leave there very quickly. Remember, it's instinct for them to run away. Okay. So let's talk about other reasons a horse would bolt. So a horse will also bolt from pain. So if your horse bolts and nothing comes up behind you, you can't figure out why, you pull off the trail, you wait a while, you might have to wait five minutes because remember they can hear from miles away. There's nothing that comes and you can't figure it out at all, then you want a vet to check that horse because sometimes they have like a loose body in their hock, they have a osteochondral lesion somewhere and if this loose body is floating around in their joint and then when it gets in their joint, they have severe pain, they don't know what caused it. And so they try to run away from it. So that is a medical issue that you need to work up. Um, they can also uh, bolt from pain of a saddle. So you wanna make sure you have good saddle fit and you're trying to figure out everything that could possibly make that horse run away. So it's a good thing to keep a diary write down what happens, write down if it was a noise that happened first and then the horse bolted, somebody walked out of the barn, that made your horse bolt, um, there was nothing at all, write that down. But if you start writing everything down and then you look back, you should be able to see a pattern of what is causing that horse to bolt. And again, that pattern helps you to figure out how you're able to work on the problem. I forgot to talk about cows. So say you had a herd of cows and they come bolting, all cows do, a stampede up over the hill. That can happen because we, we have places where they are breeding cows and they leave them out there loose. A dog spooks the cows, the cows go running. It becomes a stampede. And that can cause any horse to bolt because the cows are running, the horses want to get away from it. They don't, you know, you just like you watch on the wildlife channel, something's chasing and the ones that survive are the ones that leave there quickly. So the horse may bolt also. Now you might say, well, I don't have any cows to imitate this process. How do I get them over it? You go to a cattle ranch. You go somewhere that horses work with cows, uh, especially if you're afraid, have the trainer work it. Work the horse with cows, put them in groups of cows, have them herd cows, go out in the open and have them build his confidence back and then have them ride with you and help you to get your confidence back and be able for you to ride with cows. It won't take that long. Um, you know, leaving a horse that's afraid of cows with a, um, a cow horse trainer for a month would be a great thing for you to do to help him to get over it so you make sure there's not an issue and he's prepared the next time. All right. 
Now let's talk about the other thing with bolting is the fearful rider. There's a lot of people that are afraid or they're just out to lunch when they're riding the horse. They're not paying any attention. This does not give your horse confidence. This is a major problem. So the horse can feel your fear and if you're nervous, they get more nervous. So that's again a good reason why when you're working on this to make it better, you do it from the ground first because you have to build your confidence back up that he's not gonna do this again. Now, when a horse bolts, it's a lot of energy very fast. And the safest thing for you to do is to stop that horse right away and then turn around and get it to look back at that object if it, this ever happens to you. Now, you can do that with a one rein stop if you're very quick with your one, one rein stops. And so that means you have to practice that in the arena over and over again to be good and quick with it. And you have to be careful where you do one rein stops because you don't want to do that on a single track with a cliff because your horse might go off that cliff. So you have to pick and choose where you can do that one rein stop, but that's a quick way to stop the horse or to do a uh, emergency stop like a pulley rein. The other thing you can do is pull, let go, pull, let go. If you just pull when that horse bolts, the horse will just pull against you and it will just keep running because then it feels that it's confined, you're trying to hold it there and that can scare it more. The best thing is to stop that horse as quick as you can. Now you need also a bit that's gonna help you to stop that horse. And so you might have to put in a pretty strong bit in the beginning to prevent that horse from taking off. You know, so if you usually, usually use a mild bit or a snaffle bit, you might have to use something like a correction bit or a gag bit but it's most important that you can stop that horse immediately, especially if you're on single tracks or somewhere you can do not do a one rein stop. Anytime the horse bolts, I stop, I try to go back up to the object. If that horse is um, scared and dancing around, I get up, I walk up to the object, talk to the person or whatever it is, let the horse sniff it, let it see it. And then again, I would still work on it at home to get the horse over it. But you have to remember, do several things. One, you have to stop your horse. You have to show them it's not a scary thing. And then you have to work on it over and over again after that. So again, that way, if you uh, can figure out what is scaring the horse, be it a sound, cows, dogs, whatever it is, you work on it, you'll help them to get over it. But you have to be there for your horse. You have to build his trust and you have to help him to get over these things. So a horse that is bolting, you cannot ride it on a super loose rein. You have to be ready at all points in time that you're there and you can stop that horse quickly. You give it jobs to do, you practice going forward and backwards, you practice in the arena, cantering away and slamming on the brakes and backing up so you get a really good stop and a really good whoa on that horse. So when you say that, when a panic situation happens, you know, he's more likely to come back to you. But if you do not practice that at all and you just do it on trail, it's not going to go well. So practice things in arena, practice different situation, have a trainer help you if you can't do it. But once they get that horse over the bolting, then you also need to get back on that horse, build your confidence back up slowly, just like they built it up with the horse by having the trainer help you and then working on it over and over again. I can tell you most of the times the horses get over it quicker than the riders get over it because the riders keep that in the back of their mind that that's going to happen to them again. So imagine if you're that fearful, then you're putting that fear off in that horse. So again, help the horse to get better and then helps have someone help you to get your confidence back up and then be ready. Remember, this is called riding. It's not called sitting. And so you have to be ready to help that horse get through these things. And I hear this more often, you know, there's older horses that it happens to. And again, that might more likely be pain, but it happens a lot in young horses. The horses were fine. And then all of a sudden they become bolters or they're rearing or other things like that. And it's usually because the rider is not there. The rider is not helping them and they think that horse is fine. But remember, this is a young horse. He has not seen and heard everything. And even if he's a great horse, there are still issues that you're gonna to have to work through and help him through. The trainer's always ready to do that. The trainer's always looking for things, scouting things out, trying to keep danger 
back out of the way and help the horse through that. But a lot of riders don't. And you get these young horses and then these issues come up and then you just wanna sell it or get rid of it. Remember, try to work through these issues. It's a good thing to make you work in the arena and get back to the basics and build his confidence back up and then build your confidence back up as well. And you're looking for cues that your horse might possibly do something and you can usually feel it if you're paying attention. So the other options as you're getting that horse back out and used to things is if you, that horse's head comes up, his ears go back and you think he might do something, he can only bolt if he gets the power from his back end. Remember that's his gas. So that's his engine. So if you take the power away from the engine, he won't be able to go anywhere. And the way you can do that is by disengaging the hindquarters, which is also called to turn on the forehand. And you can push that horse's hindquarters back and forth and try to get him to step over. Um, but again, if it's a small trail, you can push him one way, then push him the other way and just back and forth. So he can't plant his feet to push forward to get that power out. But you have to be paying attention in order, uh, in order to correct that horse and uh, prevent the bolt from happening. You're going to pull lightly on the reins and then it's all leg once your horse knows how to do it. When they don't know how to do it, you might have to pull their head around a fair amount and then push with that leg and then pushing until you feel a couple good steps going over. Now some them over so far that direction and then push him over this direction yep and slide the bit and get his head down if his head comes up so again if you keep that head down that also makes it harder for them to rear up but if i keep moving his hind quarter that gives me time to tell him to calm down and see if he will calm down or to give me time to think of what I could do next with that horse to keep him from rearing right. up. I hope that helps you with the people that have horses that are bolting.